Meet Lawrence Krauss, theoretical physicist and writer at the Arizona State University. He also likes to wear hats, and he writes lots of books. He's a public intellectual. Here are three of his books, The Physics of Star Trek, The Quantum Man about Richard Feynman, and a New York Times bestseller, A Universe from Nothing. I can recommend it. I sat down with him during a pause he had in one of his book tours as he was coming through Canberra, and we talked about Are We Alone? Are We Alone? What do you mean by we? What do you mean by we? Well, I think probably for, for you and many people, we means intelligent life. There may be lots of microbes in the universe. In fact, I expect there are. Um, and, but for most people, I think it's a little more exciting if there's intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. But you expect there to be microbes out there. Oh, so I, I would be amazed if the universe was not teeming with life uh, at, the, at the microbial level. In fact, I'd be amazed if it wasn't all over our solar system as well. There's a lot of planets and there's a lot of stars and rare th events happen all the time in the universe. But the chemistry doesn't seem to be that rare. I mean, it's organic chemistry and, and, um, and as far as I can see, it doesn't seem that difficult to produce that kind of recipe, at least if Earth is any sample. So, so unless, unless we're very strange and um, since we're a sample of one, you never know, uh, I would suspect that life is kind of ubiquitous. From an evolutionary perspective, all the hard work is getting to, you know, eukaryotes and then beyond that to, to, to mammals, let's say mammals. And once you've done mammals, it's, it's you know, it's, it's uh, not a lot of work to, to get to complex, more complex mammals. I think the, the heavy lifting is to get to that point. The hard part for me of evolution, uh, of understanding the origin of life is getting to that point. Intelligence is undoubtedly rare. You mean human-like intelligence? that can build rocket ships. What, I don't know whether you call, want to call it human-like intelligence, but that can produce technology and, uh, and uh, affect its surroundings in that way in a, in a, at an extreme level is rare, but there are 100 billion stars in our galaxy. They all have planets. There are lots of different planets. So rare means that there's still tons of it out there. Have you ever seen an alien? Um, I live in, in Phoenix. We, we, we collect them and round them up all the time, put them in. <laughs> in, in in, <laughs> in, in the desert in, in spring, spring, spring. Uh -huh. anyway. Okay, but uh, not from another planet, presumably? Uh, no, as a rule, I, I tend to not do that. Okay, have, have you ever been abducted by an alien? Um, uh, other, than, uh, other than my first wife, no. Okay. <laughs> Astrobiologists uh, sometimes use the following logic. They say, if we can show that some feature of life on Earth has evolved multiple times independently, mm -hmm. then uh, that would become a good candidate for what we should expect elsewhere. What do you think of that logic? Uh, using the word logic in astrobiology may be an oxymoron, but, but um, um, <laughs> All right. because I think there's a tremendous amount of speculation in, in astrobiology. There it has to be, perhaps, but speculating from samples of one is extremely dangerous. And I'm very, therefore, very skeptical about many astro astrobiological claims about possibilities of life and habitable planets. But having said that, I think um, it is interesting to look to see if certain evolutionary characteristics arise independently, uh, because that might suggest it's an evolutionary imperative rather than an accident, that evolution will explore that phase, part of phase space all the time. Um, and so it's that, that aspect is kind of interesting and, and plausible. I do think if, if life survives long enough, it's hard to imagine that machine life doesn't become the dominant form of intelligence on the planet. So therefore, shouldn't we be looking, why, why are we looking then on the surface of exoplanets then? Well, because, well, there's two reasons, I think. One is because it's a light and as you know, if you're uh, drunk, and you, as you undoubtedly are at times, um, and you lose your keys outside, you look under the lamppost. So one of the simple things is to look for something that's the same as us. And, and moreover, machine life, was, uh, machine life needs biological life to, to, to be created, as far as we can see. And therefore, unless the machine life, as some people suggest, some people suggest when machine life takes over on Earth, they'll tune down the oxygen levels, because oxygen is pretty dangerous. And maybe that's the case, but, but, but uh, I, I find that a little unlikely. So the bottom line is that you need the preconditions for the life that created the machine life, and that those preconditions will be such that you'd probably produce oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay, now the story of the, the genesis of Earth, I mean, astrobiologists uh, are talking about the big picture. Do you think this big picture is important for humanity to understand where they came from? Again. For, for, for some people, it doesn't matter at all. For anyone who questions their own place in the cosmos, of course. I mean, there are a lot, and hopefully that, the two co coincide, that 
that a li an unexamined life is not worth living. And so certainly Donald Trump is never worried about it, but he doesn't think about anything.